Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at how the development gap impacts upon education and healthcare. This is part of paper two, unit B, Changing Economic World. Uneven development has significant impacts and has resulted in huge inequalities around the world, particularly in terms of wealth. The World Bank estimates are currently around 712 million people are surviving on less than $1.90 a day. This figure is used as a benchmark for those living in extreme poverty, those who lack proper access to nutrition, clean drinking water and adequate health care. However, the World Bank also estimates that almost half of the global population is living on $5.50 a day, meaning that they will also be struggling to meet their basic needs. Uneven development means that there are differences in access to services that are vital for a good quality of life, such as education and healthcare. The level of poverty in many LICs and NEEs means that industrial development is limited and therefore many people end up working in the informal sector where they don't pay tax. As a result, there is less money for the government to spend funding important services. So let's start off by considering the impact in education. In HICs, education tends to be universal, i.e. all children attend school, whereas there are significant variations in access to education in LICs and NEEs. There are several reasons for this variation, including whether education is valued enough to fund it properly, whether families have to pay to send their children to school, which is the case in many LICs, and whether there are enough qualified teachers. Average years of schooling tends to be lower in LICs and NEEs than in HICs, and you can see this variation on the map, which is from our world in data. Generally, children in HICs have between 11 and 13 years of schooling, with the highest figures in South Korea at 13.7 years. NEEs tend to have between 8 and 10 years of schooling, for example, China has 9 years, and Brazil has eight. Perhaps surprisingly though, Brazil has the lowest average years of schooling in South America. In LICs, there are a much larger variation. Mali and Niger have the world's lowest figures with three and 3.5 years respectively. However, in Zimbabwe, children are attending school for 8.3 years. Finally, there is a gender divide with education in some developing nations. There are several countries across the world where girls are denied a proper education. The most notable example of this is Afghanistan, where the Taliban government gained control in 2021 and immediately banned girls from attending school or further education. What about the impact on healthcare? Well, in LICs and NEEs, there is less access to adequate healthcare, particularly in rural areas. Access to education affects the number of qualified doctors and nurses, meaning that the number of patients per doctor is very high, so it's harder to make appointments. In addition, a lack of investment means it is difficult to fund hospitals and clinics, along with vac vaccination programmes and education initiatives that highlight the importance of family planning and hygiene. Also, in many LICs and NEEs, people have to pay for healthcare appointments and medication, which is unaffordable for many. As a result, life expectancy is significantly higher in HICs than in NEEs and LICs, and you can see this from the World in Data map on the screen. Most HICs now have a life expectancy of 80 years or more. Japan has the highest figure with 84.7, with Australia closely behind at 84.3 years. The UK currently has a life expectancy of 80.7, which is actually the lowest in Western Europe. Unsurprisingly, the countries with the lowest life expectancy across the world are found in Africa. However, there are no countries now with a life expectancy below 50, which is a significant improvement over the last 20 years. Chad has the lowest life expectancy at 52.5 years. More surprisingly, the country with the second lowest life expectancy in the world is Nigeria at 52.7, despite being an NEE and having the largest economy in Africa. This is because there are still millions of people lacking access to clean water and sanitation, so deaths due to contaminated water are very high, particularly amongst infants. Industrialisation has also increased air pollution, so more people are dying due to respiratory illnesses. 
That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the impact of the development gap in terms of education and healthcare. Thank you for watching.